I'm gonna make skinny C or make C skinny, whichever way you want to say it. I'm making a skinny C. And then I'll put my headers. I'm gonna say periods. Or you might just say months, let's say. Let's say periods. Periods. And then payments. Interest. I'm gonna put up top loan reduction. Notice that I decided to put my header on two lines instead of doing something like this. Loan reduction, which you could do and you could home tab alignment, wrap the text, but then it kind of messes everything up to the side. So I don't like doing that uh, unless I'm making a table out of it and I'll just break it out into however many lines I think it needs. To, and then I'll make it look like a, like, like, a, like a header with formatting. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be loan balance. You also might call it principal reduction and this being the principal, but then you might misspell principal all the time because there's two principles apparently and people are quite uh, adamant about pointing that out. So I'm gonna say that the, we have the bucket here. Let's make this black and white. And then I'm gonna go to alignment and center these items. And then let's say that these are gonna be our, our payment dates. I'm gonna format this whole thing as a month by month type of thing. So I can select this and I could go to the number formatting. And let's say we wanna make it like a short date, short date. So I'm gonna say this is on 215. Let's say it's still pretty long for the date. Sometimes I like to get rid of the year, but we'll keep it on that. This is gonna be on 315, 415, and it should copy down and see the next you know pattern here, 515. So there's our three months. We're gonna start off at 5,000. So I'm just gonna say 5,000. The payment is gonna be equal to this 176482. I'm gonna copy that down. I don't want it to move when I go down. Therefore, I'm making it absolute. Selecting F4 on the keyboard, putting a dollar sign before the B and the four. You only need a mixed reference, but an absolute one will work, meaning if I copy this down, putting my cursor on the fill handle to copy down, you get the same number it pulling from the same source data. The interest in month in the in the first month after the first payment is going to be equal to the 5,000 uh, times the rate of 35%, but that's the yearly rate. So I need to divide that by 12. Now, anything that's outside of my, my uh, field here where I'm working, that's in the data set, I need to make absolute because when I copy it down, I don't want it to move down. So this one in column B, I'm gonna put my cursor in there, select F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the B and the three. You only need a mixed reference, but that works. If I copy that one down, it doesn't look right yet, but I can see that it's picking up the cells that I want. That number's not moving down is the point. Here's the difference then. This is the payment that I'm making minus the interest portion. This is the re loan reduction. So the balance is gonna be 5,000 minus that loan reduction. So now we're at 3,381.01 for our new loan balance. The interest is changing dramatically because, because the loan balance has changed. It's being properly calculated. So then if I copy these two down, I can copy this one down. So now this is the difference and this is our balance after two payments. And if I copy it down one more time, it should be to zero and that's the point. So we're gonna imagine here that we're, our cutoff date is 228. And so you can say, okay, well the next payment that we make is gonna be on 315. The problem is that I have 15 days before the cutoff and 15 days after the cutoff. Now this is not a very, that means that part of this interest should be applied to, to the cut before the cutoff uh, and part of it, half of it about should be after the cutoff. Now note that this isn't like a, a significantly high number. That's why I tried to make the interest a little bit larger here, but you can imagine loan structures could be structured where they're not basically monthly payments or they could be larger monthly payments and whatnot. Uh, and so you can imagine a situation where this gets significant, just like with rent and an office building, if they structured the terms so that you pay at a different time, 
then the accrual concept is trying to say, hey, look, you need to be recording the expense when you incurred it, not when you paid it. That's the general idea. So in this case, what's it gonna be? It's gonna be equal to this 145.83 divided by two. That's about the amount of interest that was incurred in February, which won't actually be recorded until we make the next payment uh, in March. So in other words, I need to pull this 7292 into February. The dollar amount is low, therefore it might be immaterial in practice in this case, but the concept would remain the same and you can imagine the, the amount being material, significant to decision making and so on, and, and therefore relevant. So that's the idea. So now let's make the transaction. 